three naked roadsters, they harken back to a day when air was sufficient for cooling cylinders and before ride modes and traction control were even thought of about motorcycles. All air cooled, all under $15,000. Tom, tell us a little bit more, introduce these bikes for us. Well, the one I'm sitting atop of here is the Honda CB1100, just came out a year ago. Uh, there's two versions, you got the standard version that we have here today and then you have the deluxe model. The deluxe model uh, comes with a half gallon larger fuel tank. It has a four into two exhaust instead of the, instead of the four into one and it has ABS. Uh, this model goes for 10,400, that one goes for 11,900. Uh, next up is the Moto Guzzi Griso. Guzzi. Guzzi, yes, Guzzi, like pizza. <laughs> so, uh, this guy, you go up to uh, about $14,000. This has been around actually for quite a long time. It's a standalone bike, there's nothing else that quite compares to the Griso, and I'm glad to have it along with this shootout. And then we have the brand new to the market BMW R9T. Uh, obviously harkens back to a time period for BMW and they're kind of commemorating their, you know, their traditional... 90, 90 years of history. There you go, 90 years, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're getting up to about uh, $15,000 on that one. So kind of a widespread of price range here. And John, what do you think about this class of motorcycles? I think we're in the right spot because we're here at Deus Ex Machina in beautiful Venice, California, home of a bunch of very hep cats and hep, hep motorcycles. And uh, I think these, uh, these all fit in as really cool, kind of kind of custom-y motorcycles, especially the BMW. But uh, the beauty of them is that they're, they're all really good uh, bikes for getting wherever you need to go. Uh, they're actually very practical, uh, all-purpose, very versatile motorcycles, too. This has been kind of a fun one, right? We got three different bikes, kind of similar category, but they each distinct. Gucci V Twin, BMW Flat Twin, Boxer Twin, and uh, the old inline four on the Honda. The Honda was our 2013 uh, best standard of the year because it epitomized the universal Japanese motorcycle. 2014, best standard winner here, the BMW. And the big surprise today is how well this Moto Guzzi has uh, shown itself. Compared to the BMW, a brand new model, the Guzzi's kept up well, right? Yeah, the Guzzi, it's been around for, you know, a number of years. They've upgraded it, you know, went from the four valve to the, you know, eight valve. You know, what we found is that, well, I guess maybe one of the bigger drawbacks is this, the heaviest bike. And it's just the biggest bike. We got the longest wheelbase. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, not that people go out and kind of ride these through the, the twisty stuff like we did today, but you know, it holds its own, you know, in a truckish manner. You know, you get in there, it's kind of like navigating this big ocean liner, you know, like this. <laughs> you know, it's not quite as uh, nimble, as especially the Honda down there, the skinny little tires. Yeah. But really, it's a bike that, uh, yeah, there's so much, uh, you know, character that comes out of this when you're riding around, you know, downtown or out in the hills that you just, you like it. There's something about it that is just, uh, emotionally pleasing. Yeah, even though it's fuel injection is a little bit flawed, I think they need to update that. There's a lot of character there and it, you can overlook some of the flaws because it is just such a unique motorcycle. Speaking about the character though, sticking with the Guzzi, is you know, with the uh, engine configuration that the, the Guzzi has and you're sitting here, you know, at an idle and the bars are just going like that, <laughs> it makes me think of one of those old weight loss machines that you wrap around you. It's like you put that up to here and just kind of like lose a couple of pounds while you're riding this motorcycle. <laughs> I, I've, I've always been a huge fan of that bike ever since it came out in 2008 and uh, mostly a big part of it is because I, I always like my old Camaros and stuff and it's got the 90 degree 8 valve in, in, in 08 they went to the 8 valve heads and it revs to what 9,000 or 8,000 rpm and when it gets up there it sounds fantastic it's just a revy it's, it's it reminds me of a, of a classic old muscle car 
and it's got shaft drive and the fact that it's kind of long and heavy and a little bit crude <laughs> just kind of takes me back to those things and that's why I'm a, a huge fan of that motorcycle. And it's just a little tiny bit crude. You can, yeah. you can fix the little problems it has and if you're a goozy guy, you kind of want to be a little bit hands-on. And the opposite of crude is the Honda. This thing is so well finished. If anybody needed to learn motorcycle, like if their skills aren't that high, yeah. that's definitely the one. Tom, you were saying that if you had to take a DMV test, easily that bike, it's so easy to ride. Well, the skinny tires, 140 millimeter rear tire, which uh, I can't remember the last time we tested a motorcycle with a back tire that narrow. Mm -hmm. But everything is just works so well on it that it's almost benign. This thing has so much character oozing out of every pore, whereas that one, its character is almost uh, unnoticed because it's so almost characterless. I think uh, I, I think Tom said it best when he said uh, "raging bull" and "veal." I think what's funny is that you know this obviously harkens back to a time period, you know, late 70s or so for Honda with the style and everything. But I think Honda went just a little bit too far with it, and you know, it's 83 horsepower. I mean, it yep. kind of has horsepower from the 70s as well, and you know, they could have gave it a little bit more oomph uh, and, and brought up its uh, wow factor somewhat. Um, you know, brake-wise, though, I think we all felt it had really the best brakes here. Easy to modulate. Yep. Fantastic. It had a modulation clutch-wise, you know, doing our little U-turns that we do with yep. the photo pass and this stuff. I mean, really easy to do a U-turn. Well, the Honda, what it's got going for it, it's just got the best overall balance, it seems like. Like, front to rear, the suspension is not the greatest suspension, but it's perfectly adequate. And if you, if you want a bike to just get you around and you don't really want to mess with it much, the Honda's just so refined, all the systems work, the brakes are really good, and the throttle's very responsive, and everything just works perfectly like it's supposed to. And without the shaft drive like these other two, the rear suspension seems to have a better ability of tracking over bumps, and I'd rate the rear suspension the most compliant and plush of the, this group. Yeah, it's really, it's really comfortable. Part of it's the seat also. Yep. It's got a real nice, thick seat. In terms of sporting cred, it's got to go to the BMW, right? It's got uh, an awesome chassis. It's got the most power from the engine, top to bottom, I think. And uh, if you had to go fast on a twisty road, this would be my first choice. In which we actually did go kind of fast on a twisty road. We were up in Malibu riding, riding Latigo Canyon. And uh, what's the weight difference between this and the next one? Like this 60 like, pounds? This is like 488. That's 541, and that's 560 and change. So it's about 60 pounds lighter, and you can feel every pound. And the tighter the corner, the more you can feel the weight difference. And this thing flies on, on a tight back road. If you, if you want a sport bike out of this group, then the BMW wins. I agree with that. I think it wins also in terms of fit and finish. You know, all the, the aluminum work on this, even the little bar ends over here. I mean, just you look over this machine and there's really not a, a visual flaw you could find, well, almost anywhere. And I know they did this on purpose. You know, it's got the rear front subframe that's detachable, easily detachable. Yeah. In place, I think it's a little gaudy, you know, but I would really like to see this with it taken off. And I think that would really clean up this bike and you have something even more, say, you know, custom. If you ask me, the only styling flaw on this is the gold anodized fork. Everything is on this bike is black and silver, except for the fork. It stands out, and uh, I really think it should have some black anodizing. And if BMW gave me this bike, I'd find out a way to do that. When you uh, when, when you take the fork tubes apart to put in the stiffer springs it needs, yes, you can paint them black with a can of Krylon, <laughs> and it'll be perfect. <laughs> the Honda was definitely the easiest to jump on and be familiar with. To ride quick if you want to ride quick, you know, whatever. I mean, do a DMV test. Super easy. Both, you know, the, the Gucci takes a little bit, you know, getting used to the way its manners, its handling manners are. Yeah. Um, you know, we found out that whether it's maybe some brake pads or some air in the lines, whatever, it's got, you know, steel braided lines up here. But, you know, I had to resort from two fingers to three fingers to get good brake yeah. modulation on this thing. Uh, the BMW, it has, you know, some grabby brakes out of these three, which, you know, kind of upsets the front end, which, you know, John was talking about with kind of the, the soft spring, uh, springiness right. in the front. So that was, you know, a little bit upsetting with that one. So you had to kind of acclimate to, you know, its handling manners as well. Yeah, you had to get used to the, compared to these other two, how abrupt the brakes, front brakes come on. I also got to say about the Honda, uh, in a sporting role, it's got the least ground clearance. We weren't really dragging the, anything on these two bikes, but the Honda's uh, got long peg feelers, 
And I think part of the reason it's the only bike with a center stand, and I bet that's going to be the first thing to drag, and so it's got long peg feelers to uh, let you know to stop leaning over at a certain point. Still leans over pretty far, but uh, it is the one to drag here of the three. But it's got, got the most leg room too, right? I think it's got the most so leg room, kind yeah. Of adds, adds to the comfort, drag a peg now and then. Definitely, it is more comfortable than I Yeah. So with the different characters of these three bikes, it's not a, an apples to apples to apples comparison. So I think we're gonna have to go to the scorecard and uh, fill that out and see how things all stack up. But objective favorites, Tom, I think you're uh, you're on maybe your favorite bike. I know I'm on my favorite bike. But we're gonna go to the scorecard. We're gonna have a published dyno test in motorcycle.com. So if you really want to find out the full story on these bikes, you gotta go over to motorcycle.com. <laughs>